Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to getting started with the NRF24 L01 Plus transceiver. And I'm just going to call it the RF24 for short. But what we'll cover here is uh, what is the RF24, a little bit about how it works, and then we'll look at a bidirectional communication example using Arduino. Let's get started. So what is the RF24? Well, it's a low cost wireless transceiver. And when I say low cost, we're talking just a couple dollars. And since it's a transceiver, it can do bi-directional communication. It works at 2.4 gigahertz. It communicates with a microcontroller like Arduino using SPI communication. Its power supply is fairly flexible. It can go up to 3.6 volts. Uh, so you can use the 3.3 volt output on an Arduino Uno. What's nice too is its SPI can handle up to 5 volt logic, so you don't have to worry about level shifting. And also if you're using 3.3 volt logic, it'll work fine as well. It has a nice long range, I would say as long or longer than Bluetooth. Now I'm listing 100 meters, but you know in a building it's not going to be quite 100 meters. Low power consumption, so it's great for battery powered designs. It can also be networked, uh, you can network up to 6 transmitters and 1 receivers if you want to do a wireless sensor network. Now, of course, you could have more than that communicating, but it gets a little more tricky on how you handle that. But built in, it can handle up to uh, seven modules. It has a well-documented Arduino library. These modules communicate using packets. You can change settings in the registers. But we don't have to worry about that because the Arduino library that we're going to use in this example handles all that. And just a note, I didn't run into this problem in my example, but when I was researching this, I saw this, that they recommend having a capacitor right at its power supply input. And the reason is, is, you know, devices like this, they use very low power, and then when they transmit, they use a quick burst of current. And sometimes that current can really have a big draw on the power supply, so the a capacitor can be used as an energy reservoir. I have 10 microfarads, you probably could use a different value, but 10 microfarads is a good common value. And then one thing to note, and we'll see this in the example, but this can do bi-directional communication, but it's not as straightforward as Bluetooth. You can't just write and read and write and read. You have to actually change some addresses and change some settings, but it is bi-directional, but it's not as simple bi-directional as Bluetooth. Okay, here's a picture of our RF24. What's nice is even though the module is nice and small, it has some pins so it's easy to connect. Now there's eight pins and the way they're situated it means that you cannot use this in a solderless breadboard because you'll short pins together. But as you can see in my picture, I have it in that picture I'm connecting it to an Arduino Pro Mini. But you can use these cables to connect it. You can also you know, get a solder breadboard to connect it. But once again a solderless breadboard is not going to work. So here I'm showing the connections for an Arduino Uno or Pro Mini, and that's what I'm going to use in my example. If you have a different Arduino, the good thing is it's using the standard SPI connection. So for the clock, pin 13, the master out, slave in, the master in, slave out, it's just going to be the standard Arduino SPI connections. Now, there is two other different connections, the CE and the CSN, and there's also another one that I'm not showing, the uh, IRQ. But the CE pin is just used to put the module into standby and active modes. So this will need to be connected. I use pin nine, you can use different pins if you want. You never have to worry about this though, because this is handled by the Arduino library, but it does have to be connected. Then there's the CSN pin. This switches the module between a transmit state or a command state. So once again, if you're familiar with Bluetooth modules, if you want to change a setting inside the module, you have to put it in command mode. That's what this pin is controlling. So when it gets spy communication from an Arduino or a microcontroller, it has to know whether to send that out over the wireless air or to uh, use that as a command to change its setting. And that's what this pin is controlling. And once again, this needs to be connected, but you don't have to worry about it if you use the Arduino library. Then the other pin, and I don't actually connect it, but it's the IRQ pin. The IRQ pin gives an indication of some type of action or event. So for instance, if you get an acknowledgement packet, which we'll talk about from the receiver that, that it received the transmit packet, the IRQ pin can go high. Okay, here's what we're gonna use for our example, the, uh, the setup. And so I have two modules, two transceiver modules, two RF24s. I have an Arduino Uno that I'm gonna use for my transmit module, and I have an Arduino Pro Mini that I'm gonna use for my receiver module. So when I transmit a packet, 
I can communicate over that packet, and that packet will have a payload or the data I want to transmit. So that's pretty straightforward. What's nice though is the RF24, when you send a payload, if the payload never reached the receiver or if there was an error in the data, the receiver will either send an acknowledgement packet saying that it received the packet and it was able to read it, or it won't send an acknowledgement packet. So you, you have an idea if the receiver received it or not. Now what's nice about the acknowledgement packet is you can either just send it blank as an acknowledgement, or you can actually put data into it. So that, that sort of enables the bi-directional communication. So once again, it's easy for my transmitter. I can just continually send payloads. The receiver can send an acknowledgement packet. And if the receiver wants to tell the transmitter something, it can put a payload in that acknowledgement. And we'll show that in this example. This is where we get into a little bit about how it's not as flexible as something like Bluetooth, where you can just communicate back and forth. Now, if I wanted to change roles from receiver to transmitter, I can do that. This is a transceiver module, but both modules have to be aware that you're making this change. You can't all of a sudden change the receiver to a transmitter and expect the transmitter to know that it has to go to receiver. So that's where it gets a little tricky on the bi-directional communication. Once again, not a big deal, but just something to be aware of, and we'll see it in the example. So for my example, we're going to get to the code in a second, but if you want to access the library that I used, you can see the link. You should be aware, though, there's a lot of different versions of it. So I'm, I'm picking one of the latest at the time of this video. Okay, let's look at the code. So here we are at the uh, transmitter code. So as you can see, I used the SPY library because we're going to use SPY communication. Then I'm going to call two, two .h files for the RF24. And this is included in the library, and you can see I have the links there. And then finally, I have another call that I do to a .h file that I actually have as part of my sketch. So this is actually optional. And this .h file is going to let me print out the status of my module, just so you can see the sort of the state of the module. Once again, this is optional. From there, I declare some variables. So I'm going to set my CE pin and my CSN pin. Once again, you can choose the pins you want to use for that. I'm going to use 9 and 10. I set a counter variable to count the number of packets I'm going to send. I use this done bowl to know when I'm done transmitting. I then make a call to my, my RF24 library object, and I, I name that object wireless spy. And then, of course, you can see this is why the pins, you can send them to what you want. It, it asks for what you want for your CE and CSN pin. And then I declare a constant here. And this is actually my, what they call a pipe. Uh, I'm calling it P address because really it's just an address. It's, it's, an, it's a unique address for a pipe to communicate over for the transmitter and receiver. Okay, next I get into my setup code. I'm going to start my serial communication. I'm going to start my printf, which once again is optional. We're using it to print the details of the module. I then start my wireless spy or my RF24 library object. I set my auto acknowledgements, which means that I'm saying that if, if you're a receiver, you automatically will send an acknowledgement when you get a payload or a packet from the transmitter. I also enable the acknowledgement payload, which means in my acknowledgement, I can actually put data in there. I then set retries. So for instance, if, if a packet, the transmitter were to send, were to fail, I'm going to retry it uh, 15 times, and I'm going to give a delay between each retry, and that's basically 5 times 250 microseconds, so it's 1 millisecond between retries. I'm going to open my writing pipe, and this is the function that basically turns this module into a transmitter module, and you can see I feed in the pipe address. I tell it to stop listening. This is an optional function, but this basically says you're not a receiver, so don't listen for packets. So once again, this is my transmitter. I then, and this is optional as well, I tell it to print its details. So it's going to print information about the module. Okay, in my loop, I say if I'm not done, let's send a packet. Print my count of my packet. And then I'm going to set up a timer. So what we're going to do in this example is we're going to see how long it takes to get that packet over to the receiver and then for the receiver to acknowledge it. So then I do a write. So this is the transmitter. I'm writing my count, so that's my payload. I'm saying that it's one byte in length, and so then I send it. And I have it in this if statement because if it fails, meaning the receiver never sends an acknowledgement packet, I'm going to print that my packet delivery failed. If it works, then I do the else statement. 
and you can see I basically grab um, another timer reading in microseconds. I then calculate the round trip time, and then I'm going to print that out to my serial monitor. And then down here, what I'm doing is I'm checking if the acknowledgement packet had a payload. So we're going to see with our receiver that at first it's not, but in the last one it is. So I'm going to run this loop. I'm going to send 10 different packets. Then I'm going to wait for the receiver to tell me to stop sending packets, and then I'm done. So I'll print out the round trip time for each packet. Then when the receiver sends me the indication that I'm done, I'm going to print that out. And then I'm going to set my done variable to true, and then it'll stop. Okay, let's look at the receiver sketch. This is my receiver sketch. So this is what I'm going to upload to the Arduino Pro Mini. Once again, same library calls, a lot of the same settings. I have the same pipe address. Remember, we, we have to use the same pipe address if we want to communicate between the modules. Then I get started in my setup code. And once again, a lot of this is the same, except instead of stop listening, I'm going to start listening because I'm the receiver. I should also mention, too, that when I open a reading pipe, I not only feed in the address, but I feed in the pipe number. And that is because, remember, we can have up to six transmitters talking to the same receiver. And I'm just telling this transmitter, or this receiver, I should say, that this transmitter is communicating over pipe one. Okay, so if we go to the loop, we can see that we have an if statement. So once we get up above nine, so we get nine different packets, or I should say 10 packets, we're basically going to send an acknowledgement payload to the transmitter telling it that we're done. And we can see I'm storing that in this character array. So once we're, we get 10 packets, we're going to tell the transmitter we're done, and it'll stop transmitting. Then down here, I'm listening. So I'm listening for the transmitter to send me a packet. When there's a packet available, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to read it. Now one thing I didn't mention in the transmitter sketch that I'll mention here is when you pass in the variable to read the payload or even to send it, you're basically using this um, ampersand. This is basically saying, don't put the variable into this function, put the address of the variable. So when this reads it, it knows where the address of got byte is, so it puts the data in got byte, then I can use got byte later to print it out. There's got byte, I'm telling that the read function that it's one byte in length. So I read it in, I print out that I received packet number, and then I print out the packet number. So I ran this example on two serial monitors, and let's look at the results. Okay, here we are at the results. I have the receiver on the left and I have the transmitter on the right. So I used cool term for the receiver and I used um, just the Arduino serial monitor for the transmitter. Now keep in mind, you don't have to use both serial monitors. You can just use one serial monitor on the transmitter receiver. Everything will work fine. But you can see at the top, it prints out the details of the module. Then you can see that the transmitter says, now I'm sending out packet one. It then gives you the time for the acknowledgement packet. So you can see most of them around 544 or 40 something microseconds. You can see one of them though jumps up fairly high. My guess is there was a problem receiving the packet so it had to send it a couple times. And then at the very bottom, notice I get my done acknowledgement. So throughout this, the transmitter is sending payloads with the packet number. The receiver is then replying with an acknowledgement packet that it got it, but there's nothing in that acknowledgement packet until we get to the very end where we send uh, a character array. Okay, that's it for getting started with the RF24 transceiver. If you want to access the code we went over, go to my blog. If you like what you saw, subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Thank you for watching.